Today we're going to be adding a Bluetooth module to the MicroSquirt. Um, this is the ECU that I'm going to be using on the EFI Airhead project. I chose uh, MicroSquirt for a number of reasons, mostly it's a uh, small size, uh, waterproof enclosure along with a waterproof connector. Basically it's just designed for a, a, a motorcycle application so it makes sense. I've used micro squirts and mega squirts before and I have no issue with their performance or anything that they do so um, to me it uh, just seems like a good, a good option. Um, also the price isn't bad so that's that's kind of swayed me there a little bit of course you could go for a, a more high-end um, sort of ECU but I mean for this project that's this is all we're gonna need so yeah that's where we're going with that now the thing about micro squirts is they use RS232 communications cable which is a serial communications um, bus so it's kind of one of those things is you end up having to use a USB to serial adapter and uh, it just gets a bit finicky. Um, they do sell a USB to Bluetooth or a, a serial to Bluetooth adapter but then you end up with a cable and a big chunky Bluetooth adapter, things like that. Um, what I did find out when I was looking uh, about this is that you can actually fit one of these HCO5 Bluetooth modules inside this case. Um, that enables you to directly communicate with the micro squirt over Bluetooth. And uh, these days, most laptops, phones, all of that good stuff, all comes and built with good Bluetooth stuff. Uh, and there are apps to uh, talk with uh, the micro squirt tuning software like Tuner Studio. And so, yeah, basically, we just need to wire this up, uh, put it inside the case, and then boom, we don't have to have a tuning cable. We can just connect over Bluetooth. So that's kind of a win. One issue that you have to do is you have to program the HCO5. Uh, you have to change the board rate on it because Microscope uses a much higher board rate than what these come with out of the box. Um, not a huge deal, but there are a few lot of sort of tricky nuances about that, and that's what today's video is going to be about. Um, because, yeah, uh, I spent a little bit of time uh, mucking around with it, trying to make it work, uh, and there's a few issues that uh, aren't covered completely in depth. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this, but on the back here, you've got your six pins. This one has an EN pin. A plus 5 volt ground transmission receiving and state. Now to put this into the AT command mode you have to give 5 volts to the key pin on startup and the thing is this doesn't actually have a key pin. Um, this is actually a HCO5 there's also a thing called a HCO6 which is slightly different but it does the same job. But anyway, this pin right here on the end is actually the key pin. So you have to jump that with five volts when you start this up. Um, if you're planning on doing this yourself, another thing is to look for is uh, make sure that it has a voltage divider built in because chances are you don't have 3.3 volts. And these don't have five volts. These uh, don't have 3.3 volts. These use a five volt circuit for the centers and that's what we're going to be tapping into. So this one I made sure uh, you can feed it with 5 volts and then it has a voltage divider built into it which then brings it down to the level 3.3 volts which is what is needed to actually run the Bluetooth module. Um, so if you've looked after those couple of things when you've, you've, you've bought it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, to program this to change the board rate and there's a couple of other things that you can change. Um, namely, you can rename it, which is really nice, so that you can easily find it when you're looking on your phone, because otherwise it's just called HCO5, uh, which is uh, not really the end of the world, but at the same time, if you have more than one of them, or uh, maybe someone else has one sitting next to you and you don't know which one is, is the one to connect to, um, 
yeah, uh, renaming it is nice. You can also change the password and there's a bunch of other stuff you can do. But uh, basically we're primarily concerned with uh, changing the board rate so that it will communicate with the micro squirt and um, renaming. And to do that, we need to use an Arduino. You can also use a TTL, like serial programmer, but I don't have one of those. I do have an Arduino, so that's what we're going to be using. Um, I found an uh, instructable on how to do this. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't cover the issue I had with not having a key pin, so that left me kind of uh, a little bit stuck questioning why it wasn't working. But once I figured that out, um, it all went smoothly. I used his code, which all his code basically does is it brings uh, the pin 9 up to uh, 5 volts so that when you plug it in, it boots this into the AT command mode and then it just uses this as a serial interface so that you can program it with that. Um, yeah, so that, this, HCO5, micro squirt and of course a breadboard and some jumpers easy peasy okay so now we're set up i've got my computer here um what you need to do is you need to add your jumper wires um at the moment we're not going to uh, go completely crazy but we need to add a five volt jumper wire and this is the one that i'm going to use to start the the pro like um, put it into the AT command mode. This one's going to go to the Arduino Uno. Then we need a ground wire, which is going to go to the ground on the board. Then we need a transmission wire, which goes to pin ten. And then we need a receiving wire, which goes to pin only on the board. <coughs> um, I have posted a link in the comments to the instructable, so that's where you can get a copy of that code. Um, yeah, so you just need to load that into your Arduino. I've already lo loaded it into my Arduino. Um, so with this pin here, Turn my Arduino on, but I won't put any any power onto the board just yet because I need to get this jumper wire right, and this just needs to poke down onto this pin in the corner here. So, if you've loaded the code and then you've uh, put the jumper wire on correctly, then this will flash at two second intervals. That's telling you that it's in the AT command mode. Um, you only need to jump this at the very start, so now that that's all good, it's no problems, we don't need to do anything with it now, just make it somewhere where it can't short out. So yeah, to get into this, uh, you just need to come up here into the serial monitor. Uh, you need to change it to both NL and CR here, because if you don't do that, then it needs to be changed. Um, to test that we've got a connection, we just go AT and that gives us a return of OK so that tells us it's all clear. Now if you want to change the name it's AT plus name equals and in this case I'm going to call it Hans MS BT for micro squirt Bluetooth. Hans is the name of my motorcycle don't ask me why and we get a return of OK. Everything's good. To change the password, <coughs> we use AT plus PSWD equals. I'm, I'm going to keep it simple. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, the really important bit, changing the board rate. Uh, that is AT plus UART equals 115200. And that's the board rate we need to use for microsquare. Uh, then you need a comma, a 1, and a comma, and a 0. And then we get an OK. So there we go. That's all it takes to uh, change your HCO5 into uh, a board rate and have a new name and everything. 
And so now we can go ahead and install that inside the micro squirt. Um, isn't technology great? So next step is you have to take it apart. Um, it's just pretty simple, four Phillips head screws on the back. Okay, so from here it's pretty pretty simple. Well, simple and simple, but um, we just have to add four wires to the board, which then plug into four of the pins on the Bluetooth module. Um, there's obviously the receiving and transmission wires, and then there's the five volt in the ground. Uh, we have to solder onto the board here and here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'll take a detailed photo and then put that in the video so that you can see. Then we need pin two and pin six. Uh, the board has a one on it, helpfully, but it counts one, two, three, four, five, six. So one is uh, starts down here, and then two, this is the ground pin that we need. Three and four, we, five, we don't know. Six is the five volt. Now, this will be for a jumper configuration in case you brick the ECU. So when you solder on here, you want to make it so you can still put jumpers on top. So you want to try and keep it somewhere around the middle or below. Um, other than that, it's about reasonably straightforward, I guess, but you just have to tin the wires first. Because if you don't do that, you'll never get it to stick to the board. So there, just like that. Those are the four wires we need. And um, yeah, ready to go. Now we just plug it in and we will have a Bluetooth capable micro squirt. Um, but the next thing you have to think about is when you actually put this in back into the case, uh, you have to make it so that you can actually get the case closed. Uh, so. There's a few places to put this, but um, the consensus seems to put it over here, uh, mostly just because there's no actual circuit on this side here, so you're not going to short anything out. Um, I'm still going to put a piece of insulation tape around it because it does have exposed pins here, and uh, we don't connect anything on those. So uh, I am going to uh, just wrap it in insulation tape. Also, it'll stop it rattling, um, and put it in here like this. So yeah, there we go. And then case on and it's all ready to go. Bluetooth module installed. Okay guys, um, just to prove to you that it was connected over the Bluetooth, here you go. Here's the ECU and you can see I don't have the tuning cable plugged in. Uh, there's no plugs on the computer. And uh, yeah, I'll just turn the ignition on. And then yeah, wait a couple of seconds and boom, there you go. It's rather balmy here, 18 degrees. <laughs> Perfect. All right, but yeah, awesome.